Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, the host of the podcast, and joining me for this episode is Dr. Jessica Risser. Dr. Risser is Senior to Technical Consultant of the Swine Business Unit for Alanco. Jessica, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Clayton. Jessica, you and I uh, graduated, if not the exact same year from vet school, super close, right in there. So we've known each other for a heck of a long time, uh, but you haven't always been the senior technical consultant to the Swine Business Unit at Alanco. So for anybody that hasn't had the pleasure to meet you, why don't you give us a little bit of background and your experiences that have brought you to this point in the pig industry? Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, I think we did graduate fairly close to one another back in, uh, yeah, the early 2000s, we'll just call it that. Uh, and I grew up cow-calf farm, didn't really think I was going to work in pig production, but I'm a pig veterinarian from West Virginia that made our, my way into the industry through veterinary school at North Carolina State. And then um, joined Country View, Clemens Food Group. I was there as their veterinarian for 10 years and uh, then made my way to Alanco to, to experience the pharmaceutical side of our industry. Very good. Jessica, we're going to talk uh, today about a fun project that we got to do together uh, on a sow farm that was unfortunately experiencing a wild type PERS outbreak. And I say it's a fun experience. It's always fun for us as vets when we get to do interesting things. But a, a PERS outbreak on a sow farm is anything but fun. Uh, but where there is pain, there's opportunity. And that's what we set out to do was to try and help make the PERS break better. Not necessarily make PERS a, a non-event, but try and reduce the clinical signs, reduce the performance impacts. And we used antibiotics to be right up front with the audience, right? We used antibiotics in the face of that PERS outbreak to try and manage that situation. I think it's appropriate that we start with uh, justifying our use of antibiotics and talk a little bit about the background, about, you know, why antibiotics with PERS? Our audience knows PERS is a virus and antibiotics target bacteria. So let's start with connecting the dots a little bit for the audience on background. Why could antibiotics potentially be uh, appropriate in the face of a PERS infection? And if I remember correctly, Clayton, in this situation, there was some indication that you knew that you were bringing PERS into the south farm. That's so that, correct. That was also advantageous in this um, project. And what allowed us then to plan a little bit more in advance of, okay, why, what mitigation efforts do we want to put in place? Um, so antibiotics, why do they come up when we talk about PERS virus? Um, I think the audience, most of them would know that PERS is going to uh, depress the immune system's function. So it's going to set them up for a lot of other bacterial challenges. Um, your pastorellas, your strep suicides, your, you know, if whatever endemic pathogens may be in that herd, mycoplasma, APP, hopefully not a lot of that, but it could be there. So, um, yeah, some of those reasons why we want to look at antibiotics in addition when we have viral challenges such as PERS. Um, we looked at two antibiotics specifically, Jessica. Um, let's start with uh, Tilmacosin. Yeah, so Pomatil, the premix, um, which is the feed additive version of Tilmacosin that we have at Alenco here. Um, that label would be for control of swine respiratory diseases associated with APP and Pastorella. So no indication there for PERS virus. However, our Pomatil AC label, the, which is the water additive, Telmecosin, in um, herds that are mycoplasma positive, it also has um, the PERS label. So in between those two products coming out, there was some research presented and showing some in vitro work done with Telmicacin being an, having antiviral capabilities uh, with PERS virus. Telmicacin, um, what it concentrates itself inside macrophages, mainly in the pulmonary lung, the lung tissue, um, where a lot of these respiratory challenges are, of course. And then it changes the pH and the lysozyme, what's the organelle inside the macrophage which then alters that environment in which the purse can no longer replicate. So we've got the ability to um, harm PERS's replication. You know, the virus has to replicate to make new copies of itself to go infect other cells. And we have the ability to, to manipulate uh, to our advantage and reduce that capacity. So if you've heard of, of Encrexa or Draxin, you're familiar with telathromycin. 
And I told people incorrectly that, you know, that, uh, that oh, well, we might have the same impact with that. But it, it, telathromycin can help, but it helps in a slightly different way, as I, as I better understand it now. The telathromycin may not really impact the viremia, but can still help the pig get through a PERS infection. Is that correct? Yeah, so in our product in Crexlitz-Rothamycin, that would still concentrate in those immune cells. Um, I don't, there's not data to say it's antiviral, but it's definitely modulating the immune system to help the host overcome those bacterial challenges. Um, and then the viral as well as what we've heard. But, you know, it's, uh, it's labeled for um, treatment of swine respiratory diseases, a lot of bacterial ones, APP, Pastorella, Bordetella, Glacerella, Parasuis. And then mycoplasma as well, and for control of those. Was a, a sow farm that I get the the benefit of working with, and uh, as Jessica mentioned, we we somewhat knew that the sow farm was going to become infected with PERS. And in this situation, the the GDU was the initial spot of infection. A uh, new wild type virus was identified in the gilt development unit of this sow farm. Uh, that producer. Um, took the, the decision to say, I don't think that dumping my GDU is going to keep it out of the main farm. Um, I think there's too big of a risk that it's going to get into my, my main farm, into my gestation and farrowing. So we were going to live with the fact that we have PERS on the farm. But we found it before it had got into gestation. Um, so we, we had the ability to somewhat get prepared for this trial and line up when were we going to medicate. And uh, specifically, we wanted to medicate after the PERS infection had happened. And we did, um, I think I'll say this correctly, a factorial trial where we had uh, four different treatment groups. Okay, so we got 500 that had nothing. They went through the PERS break with no real uh, intervention in place. We had 1,000 animals that either got Encrexa or got Polmatil. So they got one or the other. And then we had another 500 animals that got both. And then we measured the performance, what happened to those animals. Jessica, you and I have had a chance to debrief um, kind of the results of this trial a couple of times, but give me your take-homes from, from some of the, the results that we saw. What were the things that, uh, that you would highlight for the listeners of the podcast in terms of important lessons learned coming out of that data? Yeah, um, interestingly, the uh, significance here around the Pulmatil administered sows was the total born. Um, so the number of pigs and then born alive uh, was pretty interesting, trending in the right direction. So uh, total born for, it, you can look at it, Pulmatil, no Pulmatil, Crexa, no Crexa, um, or antibiotic and no antibiotic, right? So um, with the four different treatment groups. But there was a p-value of less than 0.01, so pretty significant with those that were uh, given administered Pomatil with total born and then um, 0 0.20 with those, um, again, with Pomatil uh, for born alive. So kind of our theory was that since it was being administered there at the key stages of early in conception, early gestation, that those embryos, the Tilmecasin and Crexa were allowing, especially the Pomatil, the Tilmecasin, were allowing um, the sow to be healthier and to keep those embryos around longer um, during gestation. Yeah, I know uh, we didn't really follow them all the way through lactation. We tried, right, through the farrowing, yep. but we kind of lost lost uh, control a little bit of our project with cross-fostering. Uh, but I think the Encrexa group there did show maybe if if we could fish out the cross-fostering out of the data, some some value on the pre-wean mortality side and um, then pigs weaned. Jessica, you kind of alluded to it a little bit, but what did we see for for trends and observations, if nothing else, on that weaning population? Yeah, so our free wean mortality was the lowest within Crexa, uh, about 2% lower than any of the other groups. Um, unfortunately, the two together was higher than the just the Pomato and Crexa together were higher than the Crexa by itself. Um, and then pigs weaned by treatment group, of course, then was highest at almost 11 per sow um, with the Encrexa pigs. Sow, yep. yeah, those litters. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholerasias and Typhimerium, 
Enterosol Salmonella TC from Beringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both stereotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Beringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and accountable insights, the Lawn Co. is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions to manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. I really want to thank you and your team for, for uh, all the ideas that you contributed to the project, uh, the support of helping to be able to pull this off, and then obviously for coming on here today to share this message with pig producers uh, that listen to the podcast. So thank you very much for, for uh, you and your team. Please share that with the entire Lanco team for me and, and the team here at Carthage and really pig producers everywhere. Nobody's immune from the effects of PERS and we'd really appreciate your efforts not only to bring tools to our toolbox, but help us to precisely use those tools. Yeah, it's, it was fun, Clayton. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, to our audience, thanks for listening in to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. If you haven't checked out our website, please check us out at swinehealthblackbelt.com. Please do uh, subscribe to the, the podcast so that you get our new episodes every Friday. For Dr. Jessica Risser, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us, and please have a great rest of your day. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research. Mm-hmm.